Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, a modest, rebot your own challenge compliant book haul. So obviously the main reason of doing the Rebot Your Own Challenge, apart from the pleasure of enjoying the books that are already on your shelves, um, is that you don't acquire more books. But inevitably it happened. So I did a book haul video, I think just before Christmas, where I showed a few books that I've been given as gifts or that have been sent by publishers or authors. I've got a few more of those today. So it having been Christmas, naturally, people know that I am a bookish person. So I did receive a few books for Christmas. And I've got a couple of other books here that have been sent to me by, by people. Um, and also uh, two from an author and one from a publisher. Um, so without further ado, let me go through the list. These are in no particular order. Um, so the first is a book my dad sent me. So my dad, a big fan of, of science fiction, um, was we were chatting on email about a, a particular author, Frederick Brown. Um, funnily enough, at the same time, um, I was chatting with one of my patrons about Frederick Brown. Uh, and also at the same time, I was reading the Burglar books by uh, by Lawrence Block. Uh, so the Bernie Rodenbar books, one of which references uh Frederick Brown in the title so not one of the ones I've read yet but one of the later books in the series um, is, is something called The Burglar Who Read Books by Frederick Brown. I can't remember the exact title but it's something like that. Anyway Frederick Brown was a really prolific writer of sci-fi in particular in I think under the 50s and 60s. Um, my dad remembered reading this book uh, Nightmares and Giesenstacks uh, and I think Frederick Brown, so this is a short story collection, I think Frederick Brown was particularly um, a master of very sh short, short stories. So you can see this book is a very slim volume. Um, if you look at the, um, the contents page, there are a lot of stories in here. Indeed, it goes on to another contents page. Oh, there's one that he co-wrote with Mac Reynolds, or a couple he co-wrote with Mac Reynolds. So I read, as a teenager, a book by Mac Reynolds called, I think, The Fracar Factor, which I seem to remember was quite an enjoyable kind of sci-fi adventure. Um, anyway, this comes highly recommended from my dad. Um, so yeah, looking forward to diving into this soon and giving that a read. I've still got the book I showed in my last book haul um, that my dad sent me, which I thought was here. Oh yes, it is. Uh, Waldo and Magic Incorporated by Robert Highland, which I need to get to soon as well. So maybe I'll try and read those two back to back. Um, so another gift that was sent to me, this time by uh, Burnout, one of my patrons, which is hugely appreciated. So I've talked on the channel a few times about the Witches books by James Dark, and indeed I read a load of them in December. So this is a series of trashy, uh, kind of slightly sexy horror novels written in the 80s, published in the, in the UK, by an author called Lawrence James, who was hugely prolific and wrote under a bunch of different pseudonyms, including this one, James Dark. There are eight books in the series. I remember them uh, fondly as a, a kind of young teenager, seeing them on the shelves of like the newsagents and bookshops and being fascinated by the salacious covers. Um, they're really difficult to come by nowadays because they were only published in, I think, reasonably limited numbers. Um, and I, don't, I think they only had a couple of printings. Anyway, I've got the first six of those, was just looking for books seven and eight. And Burnout very kindly sent me book eight, The Plague. You can see what I mean about the cover, can't you? Um, so I just need to get book seven now and my collection is complete. Um, I did have an eBay save search set up for these, which I turned off during the Rebot Your Own Challenge. So I will be turning that back on again once I finish the challenge um, and trying to track down a copy of book seven so I can complete my, my collection. So this, this edition was published in... So this, is like, this looks like a first edition published in 1986 and still in fantastic condition for a book that is, what, nearly 50 years old. No, nearly 40 years old. Uh, so, what, 37 years old. So, yeah, looking very much forward to, to reading this. I've got one of, one of the witches books I've got already, book six, I haven't read yet. So I, I might read that one, then try and track down book seven and then read them in order. But, yeah, really looking forward to that. So thank you again very much for that burnout. Um couple of other books. Uh, so actually, let's do a couple that I've received from an author. Um, so I received a couple of books from an author called Simon Avery. So I read a story of Simon Avery's um, called The Nature of Panic, which was in an issue of Occult Detective magazine, uh, which I reviewed on the channel a little while ago. It was my favourite story in, the, in that 
edition of the magazine. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. A really well done, creepy horror story, but with really interesting characters as well. Simon Avery saw that review um, and very kindly sent me two of his books. So I think this one, I think, is a novella, um, Sorrow Mouth. Um, and then this one is a, uh, a collection of short stories, um, which is really, really nicely presented. It's a really uh, so a. It's nice to see books that are this size nowadays. This is for me the proper size for a paperback, um, but not uh, you know not like these new bigger paperbacks you get nowadays, which I'm not fond of at all. So a really nicely presented book, lovely cover. The, the quality of it feels really really nice um, of the cover. So yeah, looking forward to reading this. Looks like it's got four short stories in it. Uh, so published by Black Shuck Books. Um, so this is book 28 in their series. So a series of micro collections featuring a selection of peculiar tales from the best in horror and speculative fiction. So yeah, very much looking forward to reading both of those. Thank you again for sending them to me, Simon. Um, right, let's get on to, let's do the other one that's been sent to me uh, for review. So this was sent to me by Hardcase Crime slash Titan Book. So in the UK, Titan Books published the, the Hardcase Crime line. Uh, so this is Nobody's Angel by Jack Clark, um, which is apparently Quentin Tarantino's favourite novel of the year. I'm not sure if, if that's a recommendation um, or not, but it looks it looks fun. The, the Hardcase Crime books are always entertaining. I really enjoy the vintage reprints they do. This is, a, I believe, a modern one. I'm going to double-check that. I assume it is. Um, oh, OK. Originally published in 1996... So it is a reprint, but a more recent reprint for, for Hardcase. So I hadn't heard of this, um, but it but it got a typically great cover from Hardcase Scribe. It looks like a fun read. Um, okay, a few more things sent to me as gifts then. So these were all sent to me by a friend of mine. Um, so the first one is an executioner book. Uh, book 46 in the executioner series, uh, Bloodsport, which has got a fantastic cover. So this has Mac Bolan going up against uh, European terrorists um, who are called the Zwilling Horde, which is a great name for terrorists, who are, uh, they're pirating chemical weapons, which seems like a dangerous thing to do. But anyway, apparently the answer to that problem is Mac Bolan, as, uh, as is the answer to so many of life's problems. So yeah, a German terrorist group on the eve of its most savage plot. So that was like a fun one. So the Bolan books, I've been reading those uh, since I started the channel, basically, and talking about them, reading them in order. I've got up to about book I think I've got up to about book 40 and then I've got a gap of like 20 books between books 40 and book 60. So this one nicely fits into that gap. So this is book 46. Um, also got sent uh, a uh, Leonard Cohen book. So big fan of Leonard Cohen's music. Also Leonard Cohen, so I'm a watch fan if people don't know. Leonard Cohen wears a really cool watch. He wears a CWC G10, which is a British military watch. I've got one of them myself. Um, that's a bit of an aside. So this is a collection of, I don't know, if, is this poems or short stories or just writings by uh, by Leonard Cohen. Um, it looks very interesting. I do like his music. I'm always interested to read. This is, you know, clearly slightly different from the kind of thing I normally read, but comes highly recommended. And I do enjoy uh, reading outside of my comfort zone every so often. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do the Bolan and the, <laughs> and the Leonard Cohen back to back. So something comfortable, something less comfortable. Um, also got sent. So I saw this um, talked about on the channel. I think the channel's called Hobbies of a Man. Um, this is Solo Leveling by Chu Gong. So this is a, a light novel. So light novels, if you don't know, are kind of shorter, I think, like not overly complicated um, books published in, I think, particularly like Japan and South Korea, um, often inspired by manga series. So this one was indeed inspired by a manga series. And you can see, I don't know if that's like a, a cover from, from one of the mangas or not. Um, this is a uh, what's called a lit RPG, I believe. So this is a book where a character gets sucked into uh, the world of a like role-playing game um, and has to do things in that world like you would do in a role-playing game in order to like, level up and things like that. So I think it's a really interesting concept for books. It's a kind of, kind of popular fiction, and they are really popular, some of these books. It's a kind of popular fiction I've never read before. So when I saw it... Um, 
when I saw it talked about on, on the channel Hobbies of a Man, I really, really wanted to try it. I, I'd mentioned that to, to this friend of mine and, and they sent me a copy. So really looking forward to, to reading that. And then finally, uh, or finally from that little uh, that little gift set, if you like, um, Loaded, The Life and Afterlife of the Velvet Underground by Dylan Jones. So the Velvet Underground are my favourite band of all time. I've loved them since I was a teenager. Um, I just think they're great. I just, I just think the variety of their music is amazing. So this is a book that's supposed to be excellent about their, you know, their their relationship with each other, their music, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, very much looking forward to reading that. And I love the cover as well. It's fantastically well done. And then finally, um, this was a Christmas present from my mum. Uh, so this is Male Tears by Benjamin Myers, which is, I think, a collection of short stories. So I've read one other book by uh, by Myers, The Offing, which was also sent to me by my mum, actually, uh, which I really, really enjoyed. I've got his book, The Gallows Poll, on my Kindle as well, which I've been meaning to get to for ages, because that's supposed to be excellent. But yeah, this is a, a collection of short stories about kind of male fragility and things like that. So an interesting subject. And Myers, whilst he isn't the kind of writer I normally read, being a bit more kind of literary, um, I do really like his writing, so looking forward to, to reading this soon. So yes, a small book haul for you there. Um, if you're one of the people who sent me one of those books and you're watching, thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. Looking forward to reading all of them. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.